Today we're going to be looking at a pen which has been classified as a grail pen for lots of people. That's the Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age Oversize. So this is the pen and we'll talk about that later on. Uh, first of all, let's take a look at uh, the box that the pen came in. I bought this pen used, so you know it might not contain everything that you would get on a brand new pen. So it, it has an outer cardboard sleeve uh, in an in, inner cardboard uh, box. In my case, I just got the warranty card, which I believe is a two year warranty and you know, like a padded place where the pen kind of sat. And that was it, right? So probably the easiest, uh, you know, box contents video I've done. So looking at the pen, um, it's classified as a grail pen for a lot of people for, for many reasons. First of all, I feel it's it's largely the, the design and the looks. Um, you know, the pen is made of, uh, they call it the basaltic uh, kind of a rock or lava rock type finish. Um, how they make this, this finish is they, they kind of blend um, lava rock with resin and that it gives this pen a, a very interesting feeling, right? It's, uh, you know, it's, it's not, I mean, it's smooth, right? Um, however, it, it feels that, you know, like organic in a way um, and it's very different from let's say you know typical resin pen right um, so um, taking a look at the pen it, from the top right it has a finial that says Visconti uh, made in Italy the clip is spring-loaded um, it has the word Visconti engraved on the on both sides, right? Um, and I believe the black bits are painted on or enameled. Not too sure. Uh, clip wise, I'm not a big clip guy, but um, I think it's not the most practical clip um, due to the fact that the uh, you know it's pro probably pretty difficult to kind of shove fabric into this this area down here. But that's just me. You get the two rings on the cap, right? Um, and I think this is the kind of the best view of the pen, whereby you can see the clip with, against the two rings. Um, kind of gives me a very like a you know like it makes a cross basically, right? Um, so the cap wise is so before I do that, so the way that the the cap is attached to the to the pen is combination of like a spring there's a kind of a spring action down here uh, I believe it's a spring or, or some sort of magnet uh, happening where you can feel um, like kind of a, a pressure when you're actually trying to cap it and then they use a hook system so basically what you're doing is that you're actually just putting the pen into these slots and then when you turn it kind of grabs into these hooks down here. So it's an in interesting way of uh, capping. Um, the cap itself is pretty heavy because I believe the, um, the the clip and these pieces down here are maybe not this one, uh, are made of brass, right? So it's a, you know, fairly heavy, right? And we'll weigh some parts of the pen later on. Uh, so the in terms of the, the body of the pen, uh, first thing that comes out is they actually very nicely put the name of the pen down here, which is the Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens uh, is the scientific or the genus name for humans, which is which is a nice name. And at the end of the 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 body of the pen, you actually have the the place where you can kind of unscrew um, the what they call the power filler system. Essentially, the power filler system is like a vacuum uh, filler system, right? Um, you know, I get conflicting messages regarding how do you use this pen. Um, some of the literature out there says that you should kind of unscrew this part of the pen up here up to two millimeters. Um, 
put it upright and that's that's when the ink would kind of flow um, into the, the nib area but some people actually said uh, you know you don't need to do that and basically the pen would just write like this so um, for me, I never, I never unscrew this part, and I, it, the pen still writes, right? At least for a page or two. Um, not much to say about the the barrel. So lengthwise, this part of the pen from the tip of the nib to the back uh, is about thirteen point two centimeters, which for most people is a very decent size, right? So as you can see, I do not need to cap the, the to post the pen at all, right? I, you know, for a pen of this size, you, you probably wouldn't want to post it. Um, it's a very decent size. Balance wise, it is, you know, surprisingly balanced, maybe slightly to the back of the pen. Uh, looking forward, you get that, uh, kind of way of capping the pen right like i mentioned earlier on and you get the section the section itself is small however it's pretty comfortable uh, the only kind of question mark i would have is uh, whether or not this section would feel slippery over time right so it's not it's not like um like a resin pen so it could feel slippery for some people the other thing about the section is it's fairly thick, right? So it's about 11 point, uh, slightly over 11 uh, millimeters in terms of the section diameter, which is should be very comfortable for, for the majority of people out there. Then you get the nib. So this nib is, in the literature, it says it's uh, um, pink gold. However, you know, I mean, I have let's say if I bring up my M800 up here, you know, I, I don't notice that the, the gold is any more pink than a yellow gold uh, plated pen, right? Um, not too sure whether or not it's, you know, how, how pink it is. Um, and the, the nib actually has um, this particular one because it was purchased uh, last year in May. So it's not the 2023 20, carat uh, nib. It's actually the 18 carat uh, gold nib. The 750 actually signifies the percentage of uh, gold, right? So it's 75% gold. It says Firenze, uh, which I believe should be a region or town in Italy. And in this case, my pen is an extra fine. Um, I kind of like the design of this nib compared to the palladium or the old nib. Um, you know, kind of looks more classic to me. The feet, uh, fairly basic feet. So um, I'm going to be doing a bit of writing. And before I do a bit of writing, let's compare this pen with size wise versus, and it's very, very dark in the room today apologies the other thing about today is that I'm actually using um, a replacement microphone my regular microphone kind of died so sound might or might not be fantastic uh, so I have a couple of pens lined up I have the custom 823 uh, which is slightly longer than the homo sapiens and I have the M800, which is slightly uh, shorter. And when you open up the pens, you can kind of see that the, the Homo sapiens is definitely longer, um, you know, than these other two pens, right? By a little bit. Since we have all these pens here, um, all of these pens have kind of the same dimensions as a Joe number six, right? I know there's been a lot of people saying, you know, I shouldn't use terms like that, but size wise um, and diameter of the feet wise, it is probably around the number six size. So 
So let's do a little bit of writing. I'm going to raise the table a little bit to kind of give you a better view. So this is the Visconti And it's the 18 carat in extra fine. Um, I believe I, I've inked it up with uh, my usual Waterman Mysterious Blue. And the paper I'm using is um, Hurlitz X, X Book. And for the extra fine nib, it, it does have a little bit of give, not too much. Um, it is you know, I've read literature out there uh, on the internet that says that this nib is very dry, but not the case with this particular nib. I'm not sure whether it's been tuned by the previous owner. It might have. So smoothness wise, the nib is smooth. Um, however, it has to be noted that there is kind of a sweet spot for the nib. I mean, if you write with, you know, the pen this way, you can tell that, uh, you know, it doesn't really work. And if you do it this way as well, it doesn't really work. The, the ink only gets laid out, laid down uh, properly when, when the nib is aligned, you know, you know, at the writing angle. So that's the first point. Um, I don't really do reverse writing, but uh, it probably that will work um, as a reverse writer. Uh, like I mentioned earlier on, you know, in terms of line variation, there is a little, however, not, it's not a flex pen, but it's, it's pretty soft uh, nib wise. So it's a, it's a good writing experience. Uh, probably extra fine is the way to go if you're using semi-decent paper um, in your everyday writing. So kind of closing thoughts about this pen. Um, I think the pen is a great size, right? Uh, especially the oversized version. I, I have no experience with the midi or the medium version, uh, if that's still around. Uh, the feel of the pen is like nothing else. I mean, if you bring up like a, a resin pen, you know, you, you know, it's nice and all, but you know, cannot be compared with this feeling of uh, uh, lava and resin mixed, right? It's a very, it's like holding a very smooth uh, rock in a way, a very organic feel. And the other thing about this pen is, you know, for some reason, you know, you, you kind of want to use it, right? I'm, I'm not sure why it is. And you want to kind of let people know that you're using such a, such a pen. In terms of uh, cons, I would say that, uh, you know, having used this pen for a week or so, uh, cleaning this pen is kind of a chore. Uh, as you can see, the section of the pen is made of this same basaltic um, material, and you know it can absorb uh, ink. So I mean, you have to be very careful. To I haven't had any problems, and since this section is black, I don't think it will be that big of a deal. But uh, the whole pen itself, all these black material down here, will absorb uh, any form of liquid, right? So basically, if you submerge if you're one of those that likes to submerge the pen in in water to clean it and all that it will absorb the water I'm not sure what's the long-term effect on on that uh, so cleaning how do you actually clean it i've only found one way basically you just open up this uh this screw or this mechanism up here and then you just keep on pumping 
uh, water into the into the nip I mean to the barrel area down here um, and that's how you fill the pen as well <clears throat> the other con I can kind of see in this pen it, is that it's slightly heavy I've seen uh, you know spec wise websites out there that say that the pen uh, weighs 12.6 uh, grams however from for some reason sorry 26 grams but for some reason my pen weighs even though it, it has some ink in it right um, it weighs kind of close to 30 grams which is compared to let's say the custom 823 which is at about 20 grams it's nearly 10 grams more um, so it is quite a weighty pen, right? Um, I've done some long uh, writing sessions of this pen and it kind of, I, I, my hand kind of felt it, right? So that could just be me. The other thing uh, con-wise about this pen is that the pen can start to tarnish, right? So I've, when I got this pen from the previous owner, there was there was some uh, green greenish oxidized oxidization uh, on the on these bronze bits so if you have uh, if your hands kind of perspire a lot um, even though the you know it might help grip wise with with this lava material just bear in mind that uh, you know the the salt in in the in the kind of the slightly sweaty hands can oxidize the material uh, fairly fast right some people like the look of um, this because my pen is is definitely not a new pen some people like the kind of uh, tarnished or worn in look of this of this uh, bronze uh, and last but not least the price so um, hard to I mean the closest or the easiest pen to kind of compare uh, again it's fairly dark apologies uh, these two pens with would be the M800 right Basically, the M800 has an 18 karat uh, nib as well. And you can get the M800 if you look around hard enough for probably half the price of this pen, right? The other pen which you would probably can kind of match this up with is with the Custom 845. Again, another pen which I have not reviewed. Um, this pen um, has a very, very similar uh, nip to the to the Visconti right if you if I put these two nips side by side you can tell you know dimension wise they they are very very close they're both 18 karat um, and the price of the the pilot is uh, you know probably still cheaper than the Visconti by maybe one one or two hundred dollars the pilot obviously is made of Arushi and it has a Arushi finish Sorry, it's made of ebonite and it has a rushi finish on it. It's very light and so on. So the bottom line is that this pen, uh, price-wise, is, is kind of expensive. Uh, although it's made of different materials, brass and, and lava, and there's a lot of hard work that went into this pen uh, for that $700 to $800 that this pen costs. You might want to weigh that against all the other aspects which I spoke about today, right? Um, in terms of nip performance, I I think it's good. However, you know, I wouldn't say that it's not much better than any of these pens, which I'm showing right here, right? Which costs less. So essentially, what are you kind of paying for uh, in excess of of the the cost of those other pens? Would be the finish the design, um, probably the marketing of, of Visconti and so on. So uh, in closing, what do I think about this pen? Would I buy it again if I lost it, if I damaged it? Uh, I'm not sure actually. Um, having had one in the hand, I really enjoy it as, as a writer and I like generally like to, to feel it and kind of hold it even though I'm not writing anything with it. Um, however, for the for the price, I got this used, and I think uh, that's 
that's perfectly fine for me but I will definitely not buy this pen new that's that's just my opinion so again thanks for watching the video uh, hope the mic quality is kind of uh, going through well today let me know your thoughts about the um, the video uh, please give me a like comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next video thank you bye bye